everybody. Welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Plane. Just got back from watching it. 2023 movie. Read you the, the overview. Then I'll give you my overall impressions and grade. And if you have not seen the movie and would like to, based off my recommendation or not, where's my marker? Then you would want to shut off the video at that point in time because there will be spoiler alerts. Um, but yeah, it's a typical thing. Overall impressions, great plot synopsis, character development, and similar movies and uh, major themes. Uh, not really. But this movie, Plane, starring Gerard Butler, who I always forget his name, but I like him as an actor. So it says, this is an action thriller movie. It's an hour and 47 minute runtime. 6.9 out of 10 on IMDb. 78% on Rotten Tomatoes, 94% on Fandango, and 93% like this on Google. Pilot Brody Terrace Torrance saves passengers from a lightning strike by making a risky landing on a war-torn island, only to find that the surviving that surviving the landing was just the beginning. When dangerous rebels take most of the passengers hostage, the only the only person Torrance can count on for help is Louis Gasparé an accused murderer who was being transported by the FBI. Admittedly, you know, obviously, I don't, I don't have a big itch to go watch another movie or another TV show. I just do the stuff for content and to, I guess, do something throughout my day. But action-adventure movie. Um, nothing, the plot wasn't super unique, but I really I liked it. So I'm going to give it overall overall impressions. Again, just an action action flick, action-adventure. thought it was well done. Um, not the plot wasn't super super novel by any means or like something way out of left field where you didn't see it coming. But that was enjoyable. That was really enjoyable. So I'm gonna give it an A minus. Just really for like the setting, I guess. Like the survival, like like the day after tomorrow. Any any like shows where it's like natural disaster. I think I don't know what The Last of Us is. I know it's based on a video game, but the big show on HBO right now. Is there anything where it's just like kind of like apocalyptic or just like really like survival against the elements or in this case against rebels? But the survival type of movies I typically like. Um, action adventure I typically like if it's you know just something something interesting. So plot wasn't super novel by any means, but I'm gonna give it an A minus in the well done range. I just I just thoroughly enjoyed it. So not too much to say in terms of like novelty or originality, but the plot moved along well. I'm a big fan of Gerard Butler. And the, I thought I thought the, the runtime and sequencing of the of the sh of the scenes was was well done. So A minus for plain movie, one of the better ones I've seen recently. Nothing super unique, just an action flick, but I certainly recommend it. So if you've not seen the movie and would like to, I definitely recommend it. Um, if you want to watch off the video now, we'll be discussing the plot synopsis. So we start off, we meet Brody Torrance. He's a pilot for uh, Trailblazer Airways. He's talking with his daughter, uh, Daniela, and he's basically flying home. He's got to do a couple flights, and it's New Year's Eve. So it's modern day um, plot or setting. Uh, Brody Taylor, played by Gerard Butler, is the pilot. You Im immediately meet Lewis, who's a prisoner being transported by the U.S. Marshals. They get on the plane. It's a very light plane in terms of passenger uh, occupancy. I think it's they have like 11 passengers and they are flying from London to Tokyo. Tokyo? They're flying from somewhere to Tokyo and basically their, their flight, again, I don't know the, the, like the protocol to like take off an airplane by any means, but they have like some flight inspector come through and is like, hey, you're going to be transporting this prisoner and also here is the, um, here is the weather forecast. And so the weather forecast guy was like, oh yeah, no, you can go right through the storm. The storm will be inland by then. Time you go there, so you go, you'll, you'll save an hour and $12,000 of fuel cost or something. So right at the bat, they're not too sure about the, the storm. The technician or whoever does some pre-flight inspection or something is like, you're good to go. And so they take off. So you have your Brody, who is the captain. You have um, Samuel Dele, I believe, who's the pilot assistant. He is from Hong Kong, and you have a couple Americans, a couple British people, a couple Swedes, and then and then your um, your prisoner, who I guess is an American, it seems to strike me as an American, but and his and his uh, police escort as well. And so they're flying the plane. They start hitting some turbulence. They, they think it should be okay or shouldn't be too bad. 
But then, you know, it's about, I don't know, probably about 13 minutes, maybe, eh, probably less than that, five to 10 minutes. And then the, you're not sure if the turbulence is gonna be too bad. Obviously, you know, the plane's gonna go down. So, and once they hit really bad turbulence, um, on one of the things that they, just like in real life, when they, <laughs> not, I'm not trying to laugh, but the, the people where it's like they had injuries hitting the ceiling, they do that thing, and two of the people die. The per, uh, one, one of the flight attendants dies from the turbulence, just like breaking their neck on the ceiling, as well as the, uh, the uh, law enforcement transport for Lewis also dies in the turbulence. So they, you know, they're, they're over, land, over water, the plane's at night, and this is like literally on right on New Year's Eve. And so they can't see land, right at the last minute they spot the land, they find a road and they land on it. So the plane isn't too damaged, you know, the wings are a little funky, but they pretty much land, the two people are dead from the turbulence, and now they're just kind of like survivors on, a, on, a, on an island. And so they you know, get everybody off, they start making some shelters, um, they try to, Brody and Samuel try to just try to navigate, locate where they're at, because again, their transponder went down. Oh, but the big, big, big point is they, during the turbulence, all of the, all of the, um, the electronics go out. So the plane doesn't crash because the turbulence, of the lightning hits the, the transponder and all of, all of the electronics on the plane get shut off. So that's, that's really why they have to land. They've got 10 minutes. They take it minute by minute. Land the plane. They're the two people dead. They're trying to figure out where they're at. They're, you know, um, counting their supplies, you know, how much food they have, how much water, this and that. Nobody has a cell service, and they learn they're in some islands in, in the Philippines, I believe. And so rather quickly, the, um, the Lewis guy was like, I think it's Lewis who points it out, but rather quickly they learn it's like, we're on, we're on an island where there's not too many, um, where there's not uh, law enforcement really active, and it's just run by rebels and separatist groups. And so Gerard, when they were flying in, he flies over like an abandoned building, he's gonna go check out to see if he can get, get a phone call into anybody. And so all of the passengers stay back, but he takes Lewis with him. And so they're walking through this thing, not, not too far, I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour maybe, again, just guessing. But walking through the woods, not a long, extremely long distance, they're kind of talking back and forth. You know, after the initial crash, Brody unhandcuffs Lewis to go with him on, on, to look for this building. The, you know, the passengers aren't too sure, should be worried about a murder from 15 years ago. But Brody and Lewis go to try to stake out this um, abandoned building, see if they can get contact with anybody. On their way there, Lewis just disappears. They're almost at the building, and he just kind of runs away. Not, not, not super strong on the plot there as to why. But regardless, Brody gets in the building, finds an old telephone, um, and makes contact with the this, uh, Trailblazer Airline you know, Safety Center, and it's another classic. Well, that is a major theme trying to report actual crime to people that are incompetent people that make $35,000 a year and they just hang up on you. That is, that is very, that is a very major thing. But so that happens, he calls in and the chick's like, you know, we've been getting prank phone calls. Very similar scene to like the original uh, Transformers, if you've seen that with Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox, where they're at the initial fight scene with the big Transformers and the, the dark skinned black guy, I forget his name, but well known actor, I think it might, be, it might be Tyrese Gibson, actually. I think it might be Tyrese. But um, calls it in, and she's like, you know, he's in a, she's in a shootout, and then they hang up the phone on him. So very similar scene where it's like Gerard Butler, Brody Torrance is trying to get through to this uh, 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 jet, jet uh, trailblazer airlines, and the chick's just like, no, this doesn't count, hangs up. Ends up getting through his, into his daughter, Daniela, who then verifies it to the to the um, uh, Trailblazer Airlines, or what, what he, mid call with uh, Daniela, he gets attacked by one of the rebels. So it's the first run in with the rebels. Brody wrestles around, they have a knife, Brody has a gun, gun gets kicked away, and he ends up choking out, Bro or, Bro or Brody ends up choking out the rebel. And so, right right as, um, I, think, I, think, I think Brody's the one that kills him, but regardless, Lewis comes right back into the scene after running away from outside the building, he had taken taken down two. And while, while Brody's on the phone, he can see like a car is pulled up. But uh, Lewis has taken out two of the guys and gotten rifles now. So for their for their weapons and defense supplies, they only have the one pistol from the dead um, security guard or uh, law enforcement that was transporting Lewis. But now they got a couple. They got a couple sticks, and they're going to make their way back to the plane. And so they you know, they they've killed three rebels. Brody and Lewis have made some contact. They're not sure what, um, how much of the communication's gotten through. 
And so they go back to the plane. Rather, rather quickly, again, the, the people stateside or the trailblazer things, they verify the phone call. Once Danielle, you know, they get, they get through that pretty quickly. Um, but they assemble a team, basically, the Philippines, because these rebel places have been so such a stronghold for people with no like law enforcement around, like the Philippine army or whatever won't send in a search and rescue team with it for at least 24 hours in support. And so time is obviously of the essence. As they get back to the plane, they see all of these rebels had pulled up while like a farmer dude from the this militia controlled area spotted them and told their head dude, who I think his name was Datu, which I think is just leader or ruler or something in their whatever language they're speaking. But there was no character with the name of the, ma the major rebel dudes. And so they all pull up, they all come in route with the choppers. They're in route with the choppers. And that's a 42 Doug uh, quote that I keep saying, by the way. But so the plane, people at the plane, they, they just don't know that this is a rebel controlled area. They're like, oh yeah, sweet, we're gonna get saved. And then the Samuel's like, oh, we shouldn't be too happy about these guys. They get out of the car, they start spraying choppers in the air. And so they round them up. Um, well, I guess even before they get back to the plane, when they're in this abandoned building, Brody and Lewis, they see, it's like a really like abandoned warehouse type of deal, but they find a video camera where they've clearly tortured and you know asked for ransom from foreign, foreign people, and you can see blood all over the place, so they clearly executed them. So now Brody and Lewis know they need to get back to the plane, they go back to the plane, and this, this is unfolding where they're already, the rebels are spraying choppers in the air, and they shoot one chick, who was a, tries to run away initially, and they behead another guy, who's like, uh, I think I think it's her husband, or just acting out as well. And so they transport them on a bus back to like the main village, and basically again has the leader dude has them say their name and country into the camera, clearly setting up a, a ransom video. And so Brody and Lewis decide uh, that they're gonna try to help them, and so they go into the they go into the village. Well, they kill, so like three of the dudes are left, or two of the dudes are left behind from the rebels to like pack up all the iPads and steal all the shit that the, uh, from the plane left behind. And so Brody and Lewis whack those dudes, they get the, they kill one guy and then get the information on the other guy and Lewis kills that guy. And so now they go into the, um, into the village. And at this point, because of the, the Philippine people not being able to put in a search and rescue team together, um, the Americans have some like, I think like three or four um, special operatives being parachuting in to like help save them. So I believe that's Scarsdale, Shellback, and there was one other one. I don't know if he had a name or not. But so they have like three like special operatives going in to try to save these people before they can assemble a real search and rescue team. And so when Brody and Lewis are, are trying to um, locate the prisoners, they take out a couple dudes against it's rated R. There's there's some violence and gore in this. Takes out a couple dudes with a sledgehammer. Not super gory, but definitely some violence and blood. Um, but again, they just don't they don't want to alert the guards. There's a bunch of these rebels, so they have to kill these people quietly and, and get the prisoners. So they do that. They take about three or four out. You know, it's like it's again it's just this like Philippine archipelago type environment. So you have the village kind of spread out. They get the prisoners released. They don't really have a way out. There's only one road in and out. So Brody decides he's going to give up himself and distract the guards and let, let Lewis or the, the rest of the passengers drive away out of this room. And so they did, he does that, he immediately gets beaten down pretty bad, there's a bunch of rebels, they're about to execute him, and that's when the, the special operatives start murking these dudes. And so big fight, firefight, Brody gets rescued. Um, I don't think in this scene any of the, um, any of the special operatives get, even get shot. And so they get out, they get the prisoners out, but now they know the whole, the whole entirety of this militia controlled environment is going to be coming for them. So now their plan is to get back to the plane. They know there's not going to be um, search and rescue for at least 24 hours. So it's like during this time, um, Brody, like when they were landing after the storm, like the, the, not the electronics that come back on, but like there was enough basic functionality to try to fly the plane again. And so I think they could have been a little tighter on the plot, maybe done something a little different, but again, overall A minus, I liked it. So they get back to the plane. You have, you know, they're right there. They got five, ten minutes before the rest of the rebel militia is on them. So you have the military guys setting up shop to like one dude's got a 50 cow, which he just blows dudes away through like car doors and stuff, which is pretty funny. But but they have like five minutes. So Brody has to like try to get the landing gear, get everybody back on the plane. The military dudes and Lewis, who was an ex-military dude himself, but again, it's being transported. Back to the states for murder, 
or released to a different country for murder, he's being extradited somewhere. And he's out there with the military dudes preparing for the onslaught of the militia. Militia dudes pull up, big firefight, everyone's murking everybody. Um, again, I don't think any of uh, the the actual like the military people get hit here. Maybe maybe like once when they're like, trying to like, fly away. I don't think any major deaths from the prisoners after the first the one one get the two that get executed from the first run in with the militia. A big firefight. They're laying stuff down. The rebels try to use an RPG. Um, Lewis clips that guy. Right, he's about to blow up the plane. And basically, Lewis is like, so these special marine dudes brought a five hundred thousand dollars security blanket. You know, if they get captured to like pay off the rebels, but they're like, this isn't gonna be enough to save everybody. And so Lewis, when they're when they're in the firefight, he needs more ammo, and they have this like stockpile of clips, like magazines. Um, and, and this $500,000. So Lewis sees the 500 grand, you kind of see he's like, should I just dip out right now or continue to fight? And so he continues to fight, takes out the RPG dude, they all get back on the plane, the engines are running, they're going to take off, they run over the last one with the RPG, and you see Lewis, you know, not getting on the plane and running away in the, in the woods. And so they get up off the plane, big release, they have, you know, barely any range on the plane, it's, you know, still in terrible shape. They can fly at about you know 50 to 60 miles across one of these ar other archipelago ar islands and land safely where they can be safe. So they do that, big relief after they get off the plane. Um, Brody does get hit in the leg and the shoulder. So then once they get to this new island, he doesn't like immediately seek health, like uh, medical attention, which is uh, maybe not to the shoulder, but to the thigh. You're definitely gonna see you hit an artery there. I mean, any gunshot wound, but he just kind of like, the, the great relief of you know not being around the rebels anymore. It's like now I'm not gonna worry about being shot twice. It's like you should probably get that checked out, Captain. But so they do that. And as they're leaving, one of the one of the military dudes does get hit, but I don't think he dies. And so that is that is really kind of the whole movie. Like I said, nothing super unique, but in terms of plot plot synops or plot development, just moving along to new things. Thought it moved well. Really like Gerard Butler. Enough to put in the well done range, nothing super unique with the plot, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, it's my movie review series, A minus. So, similar movies and major themes. I don't know, I'm sure there's a lot of similar movies to this type of thing. Again, the major themes is calling people that have legal obligations to do something to just hang up on you when they get offended. That is super true. So, and I've experienced that myself hundreds and hundreds of times. So, Thank you for watching. This is my second YouTube today. I'm going to be pumping as much content as I can until I'm allowed to have constitutional rights and start a career in family, which will be never. So I hope you learned something or not, or just, I don't know, listen to. It makes it, most of these movie, or videos are made for like people who have seen the movies and just like want to watch a recap or liked it or didn't like it and want to see what somebody else thought you know, a year or two later or whatever, or the next day, but again, my videos get no traction at all. So that is my thought of the plane movie. That is my movie review for the movie plane. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.